it's much and we've got a lot of red light therapy being used to cover let's go okay first up new products there's nothing really to report on here uh block blue light came out with a new mask i may have touched on that in the last video it's got four wavelengths including 590 nanometer amber light which is i think a good addition retail price is 350 us dollars uh, i am affiliated with block blue light if you use the discount link down below you save i think 15 percent so definitely tap into that i am expecting this mask to arrive soon so i will be doing I probably won't review it independently, but I'm going to get a bunch of masks and do a big comparison very, very soon. I'm starting to source all of these masks for that comparison. Looking at this mask though, it's the same style, I guess you'd call it, as uh, Omni Lux mask and a few other masks we've seen on the market. But what is unique is that fourth 590 nanometer amber wavelength. Now this month, I want to look closely at V-Lite and Neuronic. These are two uh, photobiomodulation, brain health, uh, cognitive health, mental health devices available on the market. Even though they're treating similar problems, they have very different products. Now, I have interviewed the founders from these companies and I have reviewed their products in the past. Links are all down below. And what's really cool is both of these companies have just come out with new products. So first up, let's share some articles that these companies have shared recently. Firstly, V-Lite have an article on their new V clinic in Canada. I think this is a really cool clinic. If you do live in Canada or are willing to travel and you are suffering from a cognitive brain related disorder, gosh, I, I think I am. Uh, I definitely would recommend checking this clinic out uh, and even going there remember v-light have been in this game a very long time and have a lot of research and a lot of medical expertise when it comes to brain health now v-light have also published an article on the importance of shining light from the nose to the underside of the brain and they have a very interesting uh, article on the importance of sufficient power density power output when it comes to treating the brain now this is something i'm going to come back to anyway links are all down there for you to check out in the meantime but yeah it's quite interesting because neuronic have also released an article on power density and brain health and their devices now by the way neuronic have also released an article on red light therapy for mold exposure so check that out if it's something that interests you but let's take a closer look at these two articles on power output you see i have tested these devices in the past uh, the neuronic gen 1 device was only putting out i think it was about six or seven milliwatts over centimeter squared of therapeutic red light they're using the 1070 or thereabouts wavelength personally i was surprised it seems quite low V-Light, on the other hand, their devices are putting out 100 milliwatts or higher. That's a big difference. 10, 15, 20 times difference between the two devices. Anyway, the Neuronic article, and I highly recommend checking these articles out if you are in the market for a device. They've taken a really deep dive into how you test light, uh, the different types of spectrometers, what the numbers mean the difference between testing at the led source and the helmet source it's a really good article even if you're not in the market for one of their devices i think it's still interesting to read when it comes to light testing and panels and everything like that now what was interesting in that article their outcome their findings from their extensive testing was that yeah their devices are what i would say are very low power devices I mean, their own article states it's only putting out a few milliwatts over centimeter squared, less than what I found with my spectrometer, which is classed as a low end spectrometer, by the way. Now, it's great that Neuronic is sharing all of this. I mean, the more transparent, the better. What I find really interesting, though, is this number is it's very, very low. However, Neuronic have a lot of great case studies. Uh, they're doing some clinical studies and stuff. So they obviously believe that their um, power output is. It's great, you know, it's it's working and um, that's what they want, I guess, from a device. Now, when you look at the other side, you look at V-Lite, uh, their article is showing that their devices are quite powerful. In fact, they had their devices and a Neuronic device and another competitor's uh, device tested by a third party organization. This is the PBM Foundation. I'm hoping to do an interview with them soon. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. By the way, if you enjoy this video, hit the like button. Anyway, they had the PBM Foundation test their devices and the Neuronic device. And what they found is that, yeah, the V-Lite devices are putting out 180 up to 300 milliwatts over centimeter squared. 
that's a lot of power. I mean, it's kind of what I expected though from a brain device. Uh, my son, we treated him uh, for a brain disorder when he was a little bit younger. And yeah, we were using a laser device that was about 200, 300 milliwatts over centimeter squared to ensure the light was getting into the brain, into the areas that we wanted to treat. Now the PBM foundation results had the neuronic device at only at five milliwatts over centimeter squared. So these numbers actually align with my own testing. They're actually higher than Neuronic's own uh, numbers based on their latest article. But what is really interesting, and I'll put the graphic on screen here, the lights show the power output of the sun at around 100 milliwatts over centimeter squared. And then of course, effectively they're saying that you're better off just going outside and getting sunlight exposure on the head than using one of their competitor products. And yeah, that's a valid argument I get guess at a high level, but I do need to point out a few things here. Of course, that 100 milliwatt figure from the sun is all the wavelengths, not just the 1070s or the reds. Saying that, I have done my own testing of the sun at different times of the day and different seasons, looking just at the near infrared and the red wavelengths. And yeah, I can tell you that the numbers are still higher than what the neuronic is emitting, for instance. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very interesting. I'm not gonna draw any conclusions here. Uh, it's something that I probably need to take a deeper dive into, though I'm not the brain guy, I'm not the scientist in this uh, space either. So uh, I just, I like, finding the numbers and, and presenting them and letting you guys make an informed decision. I would say though, if you are looking for a device to treat Alzheimer's or some other brain disorder, I would read as much as possible. I would listen to my interviews I've done with these companies and uh, I, would, I would do a heap of research before forking out thousands of dollars and investing a lot of time and energy using these devices. So also I'd probably jump into our Facebook group, do a search in there, We'll leave a post and ask some others as well. Links are all down below. Okay, so over at Light Therapy Insiders, Byte has published three big articles in the last month. They are Red Light Therapy for Fibromyalgia, Healing Tendinitis with Red Light Therapy, and Does Red Light Therapy Work for Eczema? They're all great articles. There are many more great articles over there. Be sure to jump on the email list if you haven't. We send out a heap of content to that email list. Okay, this month in the science field, there's two studies I wanna share. The first one is from Vlight. It was a clinical study done by researchers at the U University of Toronto. They were looking at whether the Vlight gamma can enhance brain function in cognitive impaired patients. So 14 participants were either using the device or using a sham device. They were using it every day for six weeks. And the patients were subject to a range of tests, including blood analysis, MRIs, and also cognitive tests. Of course, this was done before and after. The key findings, the photobiomodulation group, the group using the gamma device, showed improved executive function and improved cognitive marker trends. They also showed improved markers in brain health. Now I need to read the notes here. The red light therapy group showed increased right thalamus volume, enhanced brain network connectivity, and improved neural metabolism, HMRS, whatever that means. Finally, looking at the blood, the red light therapy group showed improved Alzheimer's markers and increased mitochondrial function and improved neuroprotective effects. All of these things are great. Therefore, the findings suggest that high intensity 810 nanometer light shining on the brain may improve cognition in cognitive impaired patients. So definitely all positive though, it's nothing really new. If you have been following my channel for the last few years, you know, we've, we've kind of known this stuff for some time, but it is good to see more research coming out, especially looking at dosing and wavelengths and even devices. Okay, and the other study I wanna look at is a brand new study. It was only published in January, 2025, and it looked at how photobiomodulation impacts muscle performance and also time to fatigue. Quite an interesting study for those of you who are into sport, athletic performance, or just a regular gym goer. Now the participants in the study were using a laser device. I'll put a link to the study if you wanna check out the full model and the specs because it is all in there. There's quite a high powered laser device. Uh, I think it's emitting 10 watts. To put that in perspective, the devices from PowerMedic, a company I interviewed uh, a few months ago, their devices are about three watts. So yeah, this device is very powerful. It was putting out in a radiance figure of about 1800 milliwatts over centimeter squared literally 
10 times more powerful than uh, a red light therapy panel. And it was using both 810 and 980 nanometer light. However, 80% of the light was going to 980 nanometer light. So that particular wavelength isn't commonly used in panels uh, or even devices, to be honest. It's not something we see a lot of. Uh, so all of this means that this study and, and how it was done cannot easily be replicated with a home red light therapy panel, which is a shame, but still the findings are quite interesting. So they were treating the area, the shoulder area in particular for about two minutes. So we're moving the device around because the irradiance figure was so high, you, you have to, I mean, you're gonna get a lot of thermal buildup with that intensity. And the total dosage delivered was 10 joules over centimeter squared. Now the participants did a bunch of working sets. There was specific rest times and all of the power output was measured. And on screen, you can see this power output and the difference between the red light therapy group and the sham control group. And as you can see, the performance was better in the group receiving the laser treatment. The researchers calculated it was between about a six and 10% improvement. Now, remember this was a single laser session prior to the uh, exercise. What's really interesting though, is the performance increase was greater. It was more pronounced towards the later stages of the repeat exercise sets. I'm not hundred percent sure of why this is the case, Obviously it's whether the laser is doing something that helps enhance recovery, I'm not too sure. But still, the findings are quite powerful um, for any athlete out there, especially because this was only a two minute session done prior to the exercise. The other interesting thing is what would happen if the device was used on a regular basis? Is there gonna be a cumulative benefit? Could you use the device in between workouts and would you see even higher results? Is there a way to even further enhance the performance? Would a longer session work? Would more power in 810 be better, for instance? There's still so much we don't know, but as you can see here, it all looks promising. Okay, time for this month's Q&A. So Gemma in our Facebook group asked, Bart and Alex, how little light is too little? Some panels have four LEDs of blue or yellow. Is it worth having? Does it have any or enough effect? Okay, so this is a good question and it's a question that's been around for a long time. I know when Biomax panels many, many years ago came out with their multi-wavelength technology and they had new LEDs incorporated in the panel, but only a small amount of energy was going to these wavelengths. People were asking, hey, is it legit what's going on so i want to read out bart's answer this is what he published in the group so bart responded i think for many goals a few leds in a full red light therapy panel is underpowering the end result so if you do want a large amount of blue light it is best off for a panel such as light path led which has a lot of blue light and yeah there's two ways you can look at this i mean if for instance you have a lot of acne and you want the benefits of blue light to treat that acne a large panel that has maybe one blue LED up here and another one down there may not really work. I suppose you could shift your face, but you know, it's not the best tool for the job. Likewise with panels that have say a few 810 nanometer LEDs here and there, but a lot of say 850. If you're after a specific wavelength, then get a device that has a lot of those wavelengths, a lot of those LEDs. However, if you're looking at just general health, well-being, the full body benefits, uh, and you want to get a wide range of wavelength exposure, it may not be as important, which is why in the past, the Platinum Biomax panels, I've said are good quality panels. However, we now see panels that are a lot more balanced in terms of our wavelength exposure. So the block blue light panels, for instance, the Rojo panels, they're putting out about, if they have say five wavelengths in there, it's a pretty even power split between those wavelengths. And I do like that. I, I think that is a good move and move in the right direction, especially because they're using credible wavelengths with a lot of research behind them. So it really does depend on your goal. For instance, if you're wanting to treat the brain, then a wavelength that is going to penetrate deep into the brain, through the skull, deep into the tissue, is going to be much more suitable than a wavelength that isn't, right? So you want to get a product that has a lot of the deep penetrating wavelengths. I've already provided the acne example. Now, of course, not everyone has the resources to buy four or five different products, one for each specific purpose, which is where a panel with a range of wavelengths does come in handy and is often my go-to recommendation. I actually think we're gonna see panels coming out with more and more wavelengths 
uh, because I mean, yes, there's a marketing benefit there, but actually there's a lot of science behind some of these other wavelengths that we aren't really exposed to in a typical red light therapy panel. And I think that's a good approach if you're looking for general health, full body benefits. And then if you do want to treat a particular issue, say, I don't know, you're you're getting hip surgery or you have a brain disorder or you've got acne, then you can go out and find a more specialized, dedicated device for that job. A good analogy here is hunting. I do a little bit of hunting and I have a range of rifles. I have one rifle that is my general purpose. It will kill most animals, small to large-ish, 100 to three, 400 yards, you know, without too much fuss. However, it's not suitable for extremely large animals or for animals that are say a thousand yards away or for pest culling where you need to take shots in quick succession. For all of these other examples, I have a more specialized rifle for each purpose. That may not be the best analogy, but in my mind, it works. Hopefully that adds some clarity. Uh, there are lots of articles over at Light Therapy Insiders on the benefits of particular wavelengths, dosing, uh, and just jump in the Facebook group or check out some of my other videos because I've kind of covered this topic. Bart's covered it in the, in the blogs. You may just need to take a deeper dive to find the right information for your particular purpose. All right, what's upcoming on the channel? I have a video on red light therapy and skin health and beauty. Check it out, it's a really good one. I've got a Huga rap review coming out. There's another interview coming out and also the Light Therapy Insiders team will be in Austin for the Health Optimization Summit 2025. So let us know if you are going to be there. Otherwise, maybe you missed uh, one of the two big videos I just published. One of them was the Block Blue Light Ultimate XXL review. Uh, I'll put a link to that down below. And the other one was this one. It was my video on how much red light therapy and near infrared light is emitted in the sun at various times of the day. By the way, for those that want to see a sunrise sunset video, I'm going to do something. So stay tuned for that.